the junior Crosby to move the motion. I'd like to thank the chair, Mr Vickers, for the opportunity to hold this important debate on the control of the squirrel population. I'd also like to thank the honourable member for Copeland, a fellow atomic kitten. It was while we were visiting nuclear reactors in Finland recently that we discussed this important debate. Now, in his 1909 poem, The Appointment, by the Irish poet Yeats, he described the red squirrel as proud and wayward, bounding and springing around the trees with a fierce tooth and a clean limb. He finished by saying, no government appointed him. Just two years after he wrote those words, American grey squirrels were introduced to Ireland and, as has been the case across much of the UK, this hardier and more aggressive species has taken over, pushing the red squirrel out and threatening its very existence. So whilst no government appointed the red squirrel in Nietzsche's poem, it's clearly up to our government to reappoint them to their natural homes as a much-loved native species. Grey squirrels are a menace to British biodiversity. They've proven perilous for our native red squirrel population. There are... Of course I will give way. I commend the Honourability for giving away the Ards Red Squirrel Group, full of fantastic volunteers who work tirelessly to protect the future of the red squirrel species in my constituency of Stanford, and particularly in Mount Stewart. Uh, this organisation uh, is led by the National Trust Mount uh, Stewart Ranger team. They are in constant contact with local animal owners to monitor red squirrels and eradicate any greys that venture. Indeed, the very presence of grey squirrels, the grey squirrels are the Hamas. Of, of the squirrel world. Um, does the Honourable Member agree that there should be greater integration between DEFRA and local red squirrel groups and development institutions to ensure that they have the means necessary to preserve and expand the red squirrel species throughout Northern Ireland? Thank you, Chairman. May I thank the Honourable Member from Strangford for his intervention. He is a keen advocate, not only of his constituents, but also the red uh, squirrel population, and particularly drawing attention and thanking for those that work so hard. Um, he mentions cooperation between DEFRA and the red squirrels. This is absolutely key on all aspects of bi biodiversity that we see uh, this cooperation. So there are now an estimated 280,000 red squirrels in the UK, just 10% of the grey squirrel population. And I'm fortunate that many of these reside on my island constituency of Arnismorn in North Wales, which has been grey squirrel free since 2016. An estimated 60% of the Welsh red squirrel population thrives in woodlands like the Dingle in Clangevny, Penrose on Arnisgarby, Newborough Forest and the National Trust Plas Newith. And I was thrilled to be invited by Dr. Rajkumari Jones to become an honorary member of the Red Squirrel Trust Wales and to be shown around Pentrith Forest by Red Squirrel champions Rob McCauley and Dr. Craig Shuttleworth. In 2018, a review of the population and conservation status of British mammals noted a significant decline in UK squirrel populations over the preceding two decades, everywhere except Scotland. The report identified that decline was due to diseases like squirrel pox and adenovirus, competition with grey squirrels for resources, deterioration in habitat quality, and a failure to implement effective measures to control grey squirrel populations. Grey squirrels cause millions of pounds worth of damage to our woodlands by gnawing the bark off trees. This can lead to the loss of particularly vulnerable tree species like beech, which in turn creates a decline in the fungi and invertebrates reliant on those very trees. In some cases, the damage caused by grey squirrels reduces the value of timber to the extent of disincentivizing investment, the creation of new woodlands. And the estimated annual cost of grey squirrel damage to trees is £37 million. And the estimated cost of the whole economy of grey squirrels is £1.8 billion. This government has taken steps to control the grey squirrel population and protect red squirrels. We've seen the Environment Act has included a legally binding target to halt species decline by 2030. The England Trees Action Plan, published in May 2021, states that we will act now to build resilience in our woodlands by improving the management of grey squirrels, including updating the Grey Squirrel Action Plan. We're now two years on from the Environment Act and 30 months on from the England Trees Action Plan, but the updated Grey Squirrel Action Plan has yet to hit our bookshelves. The current plan provides advice to landowners on controlling grey squirrel populations on their land, and provision is also made for countryside stewardship grants to help landowners control the squirrel population. I was pleased to see that the Promised Species Survival Fund was launched earlier this year and look forward to seeing some red squirrel projects receiving support when the results are announced. 
This government does recognise that this issue is bigger than just giving grants to landowners. To achieve our 2030 target and then our 2042 ambition to grow native species populations by 10%, we need focused, sustainable and joined up action. And we need it soon. So let us consider the various ways that this could be done. The first is through the traditional methods of grants to landowners to support trapping and shooting of grey squirrels. And whilst effective, this is not always a particularly expedient measure. The Forestry Commission's Squirrel Control Plan reminds us that the time required to cull high-level populations must not be underestimated, nor should the total period over which a high culling effort will be required. And even after populations are reduced, the time to sustain lower population levels can remain as high as it was previously, despite fewer animals being culled. Put simply, squirrel migration may simply displace the problem, and smaller populations are harder to hit. Trapping and shooting are also unpalatable to many people, and there are other more effective methods that need to be considered. I recommend reading the excellent report, Saving the Red Squirrel, Landscape Scale Recovery, edited by Bangor University's Craig Shuttleworth, along with Nikki Robinson of the Red Squirrel Trust Wales and Peter Lertz from Edinburgh University. Its production was supported by my own local authority, Anglesey County Council. Now, this publication looks at various alternatives in depth, and I'd like to highlight some of the proposals reviewed. One, of the re one is the reintroduction of pine martins as a method of biocontrol. Now, these native creatures have been largely extinct in England and Wales since the early 20th century. They play on squirrels, and because grey squirrels are slower, larger, more populous, and spend more time on the ground than their red cousins, they are easily pre easier prey for the pine martin. And as non-native species, grey squirrels also lack the instinctive anti-predator response to pine martin scent that makes our red squirrels run for cover at one sniff. There are estimated to be 3,000 to 4,000 pine martins in Scotland, and this may be in part be why red squirrel populations are healthier north of the border. Pine martins have been reintroduced in various areas of Northern Ireland, and in recent years, controlled studies have reintroduced them to parts of Wales and the Forest of Dean. Of course. The Honourable Member for giving way, and she's uh, elucidating somewhat uh, comprehensively on the various options open to us. Does she agree that we need government and wider society to accept that either we allow the grey squirrel population to proceed as they have done in recent decades and that will eventually lead to the annihilation of the red or we significantly control the greys in order to preserve the native red squirrel species? Uh, the, the Honourable Member from East London Dairy. Um, he mentions very, very um, effectively how this is really teamwork and how urgent this absolutely is. We need to use all resources at our fingertips and wider to make sure that we, we, we control uh, uh, this, uh, this, this terrible um, situation that we find ourselves in. The study suggests that reintroducing pine martins has a positive impact on reducing grey squirrel populations and enhancing those of red squirrels. However, this approach will not work in isolation. Pine martens exist in forested areas and dislike the urban environments that grey squirrels thrive in. Increasing the extent and quality of woodland areas will help, but it's unlikely that we'll start to see pine martens set up home in our city parks anytime soon. There's also the concern that whilst pine martens may reduce grey squirrel populations in one location, this may not be the case in another ecosystem where there are alternative sources of prey. Another option is immune contraception. In other words, the use of fertility control methods to reduce grey squirrel numbers. A similar approach has been used to control goat populations on the Great Orm in North Wales. DEFRA has invested £300,000 to support research and development into fertility control methods for the squirrel population, supporting proposals led by the UK Squirrel Accord, which is a coalition of over 40 forestry and conservation organisations. And a recent project in the Elwy Valley in Wales modelled the likely impact of putting contraceptive-laced food in hoppers, accessible only to grey squirrels, using a placebo in place of an actual contraceptive. There are a number of possible issues uh, with this, including the cost of developing the infrastructure and the risk of hoppers being accessible to other species or contraceptive-laced foods getting into the pores of other species. But it's certainly part of our potential armoury. So when comparing contraception and pine martins, one could argue that whilst the public might prefer pine martins as a more natural solution, the grey squirrel might well prefer taking the pill to facing off against a hungry pine martin. And finally, there is a newer piece of technology, the gene drive. This works on the principle of selective inheritance, whereby pregnant females would only produce male offspring. 
Whilst there are many potential benefits to this, there are also potential downsides which would need careful consideration. Gene tribe technology is really in its infancy and has not yet been researched on squirrels. There may be the risk of the technology jumping between squirrel species or of males becoming frustrated at the shortage of female squirrels, resulting in an increased level of tree stripping. It will also require heavy investment. It's unlikely that gene drives will offer a practical answer to the problem within the next decade, but I would support the government looking into the technology as part of the longer-term solution. There are a couple of other things that would really give red squirrels a helping hand. The first is a squirrel pox vaccine. Grey squirrels are carriers of this debilitating virus, but they rarely contract it, and squirrel pox outbreaks amongst red squirrels are generally linked to grey squirrel encroachment on their territory. Squirrel pox kills red squirrels 17 to 25 times faster than greys, and a single outbreak can wipe out an entire local red squirrel population. It's a horrible disease, similar to myxomatosis in rabbits, with deaths often resulting from starvation as squirrels become unable to feed themselves. Had a recent outbreak of squirrel pox on the mainland reached Anis Morn, it would undoubtedly have devastated the red squirrel communities on our island. And a vaccine developed in 2009 resulted in severe side effects in red squirrels, and no further vaccine research has been carried out since 2013. The Wildlife Ark Trust is now leading on fundraising to develop a vaccine, and several countries are listed as supporters on their website, including Germany, Spain, and Ireland. And it would be fantastic to see the UK listed alongside them. The second would be to develop and enhance the natural habitats available for red squirrels through programs like the Landscape Recovery Scheme. This issue needs large landscape scale proposals to significantly reduce or eradicate grey squirrels in a way that trapping and shooting cannot do. And so to summarise, I'm asking the UK government to show its support for our native red squirrel and back the different measures that can be used to help them thrive. Support programmes to reintroduce pine martins to our woodlands. Continue to work with the Squirrel Alliance on the development of contraceptive schemes. Invest in gene drive research for long-term and large-scale results and provide funding for research into a squirrel pox vaccine and facilitate programmes that will increase and improve red squirrel habitats through further rounds of the Landscape Recovery Scheme. Jochen Bell. Thank you very much. It really is a pleasure to speak under your chairmanship, Mr Vickers, and to follow on from my fellow atomic kitten, because her and I usually debate on the subject of nuclear on the fact that there is no net zero without nuclear, or the exceptionally well-paid apprenticeships and jobs that that industry brings. But today I have discovered our constituencies have something else in common. We both have red squirrels. And like my honourable friend, the member for Eunice Mon, I two have a real concern about how we are dealing with the grey squirrels. Because if I, I have said before in this very Westminster Hall, um, when Beatrix Potter wrote her best-selling and globally celebrated book in 1903, she based her famous character, Squirrel Nutkin, on a red squirrel from St Herbert's Island on Derwent Water in Keswick, in my constituency. However, today, I really do worry that such a book could not be written because the sight of red squirrels has sadly become so rare. And so it's doubtful whether an author, an author such as Miss Potter could become so inspired by the trials and tribulations of Nutkin, of Twinkleberry and their many cousins. There are multiple reasons for the demise of the red squirrel. Perhaps the most iconic native animal that we have, not least because of the impacts of humans and the loss of their habitat. But credit is where, due where it's due. I would like to commend the government and specifically the Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs for the Environment Act, for the Environmental Improvement Plan, which details across 10 goals how we will halt nature's decline and most importantly create more habitat, which is the single biggest action we can take to help nature recover. Red squirrels need more trees. We all need more trees, Mr Vickers, because trees alleviate flooding. They filter pollution. Trees provide fuel for our homes and power for our communities. Trees shade the ecosystem beneath them. And in a warming world, that has never been so important. Trees are home, shelter, breeding site, and larder to so much of our wildlife. Trees sequester and store carbon. And as an industry, trees support a timber sector em employing 32,000 people, providing us with sustainable construction materials, posts and beams, panels and boards, 
furniture and fittings, card and paper. And as the former Minister for Trees, I know just how tremendous the largest of our species, plant species is. And I want to put on record my appreciation for all of those people who research, plant, protect and care for, harvest trees and work with timber. So during National Trees Week, I hope we can all take a moment to celebrate the diverse and varied forestry workforce and everyone who cares for and appreciates trees. Most importantly, we should all plant a tree, the right tree in the right place for the right purpose. For anyone planting many trees, there are, of course, a variety of different funding opportunities from DEFRA. And thanks to Anna Brown at the Forestry Commission, I know we have a much speedier process too. Yet despite the brilliant England Trees Action Plan, the vast amounts of public and private policy and funding support and the overwhelming benefits that I have set out, unless we tackle the impacts of deer and grey squirrel in particular, we will fail to meet our targeted 16.5% tree canopy cover by 2050, which means we will fail to provide the habitat that nature needs to recover. Grey squirrel damage accounts for the loss of thousands of trees all over the country and millions of pounds of damage, as my honourable friend has set out. But more tragically, grey squirrels carry the incredibly infectious squirrel pox disease but remain unaffected. Yet for red squirrels, it is fatal. fatal. Put simply, where there are live greys, there will be dead reds. Grey squirrels, unlike the red squirrel, are not native. Grey squirrels are invasive. They will outcompete the native reds in their size, breeding rate, and general hardiness for habitat and food. I know in Cumbria, and no doubt wherever we have red squirrels remaining across the UK, their existence is testament to the volunteer efforts of conservation groups who work tirelessly to control grey squirrel populations. I know that the volunteers undergo training. They follow strict risk assessment procedures. They secure the appropriate insurance and the land access agreements. And they will be up at the crack of dawn using their own vehicles and their own equipment. So I would like to recognise the passion, the determination of the volunteers across the UK and encourage more appreciation for their dedication to conservation. I'm fortunate to have many such volunteers and organisations in and around Copeland, including Westlake Squirrel Initiative, the Copeland Red Squirrel Group, Ennerdale Community Red Squirrel Group, Keswick Red Squirrel Group. They're all part of the Northern Red Squirrel community and there are many other groups across Cumbria. I'm really pleased that DEFRA has committed to a robust and effective Grey Squirrel Action Plan, which will seek to control numbers. But I would like to hear some assurance from the Minister, who I know is a most competent and capable Minister, most familiar with the countryside. <laughs> herself, when we will have a published plan, and whether she agrees with me, they're in Red Squirrel's uh, strongholds. And I would argue all Forestry Commission sites there must be a zero-tolerance approach if we are to provide the red squirrels with a chance of survival and to prevent the vast and visible damage to woodlands and the flora and fauna so dependent on increased tree coverage. So, in conclusion, Mr Vickers, I would like to um, thank my honourable friend once again and I'm looking forward to hearing from the Minister an update to all members on the progress being made on the oral contraceptive, the world-leading research in the development of gene editing. And could she also just touch on any plans to reintroduce red squirrels in areas where we feel that their survival could look more favourable in the future? Thank you. Minister. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chair. Pleasure to have you in the chair. And... Um, First of all, I must thank the, uh, my honourable friend from Innismon for securing this debate and giving us all, uh, I think, three, three, probably four, five uh, people in the room passionate about red squirrels in particular. So giving us the chance to talk about that. And all the government is doing, in fairness, uh, to, to actually ensure that these precious red squirrels uh, survive and thrive. And 
I've got to thank the Honourable Member for, or Friend for all the work she's doing, actually, in her own particular constituency to champion these creatures, uh, which is a great deal of work. But also, uh, the, uh, the, the previous minister um, from Copeland, who I know has done an awful lot of this, the, the bones of the work on the framework of the Grey Squirrel Action Plan. So that needs to be noted, uh, how much she's done and, uh, and how passionate she is about this. And it's genuinely helped the whole, the whole programme along a great deal. Um, and actually, I, uh, Chair, I don't know if you've seen grey squirrels, but I have seen them close up and personal at a place called Snaysholm in the Yorkshire Dales. And uh, absolutely, once you've seen a, a, a red squirrel, I think, uh, you, you know, never forgotten. I'm a massive um, Beatrice Potter fan as well, so um, Squirrel Nutkin had a big impact on my childhood. So once they are, once one is engaged with them, uh, one would then become passionate about saving them, which I think is the case with the people in this room. But of course, this debate is very much uh, about grey squirrels in Great Britain and their, the huge impact that they're having on the red squirrel. We've got to remember that grey squirrels are often people's only or interaction with nature and wildlife, particularly in urban areas. So we need to tread with care over this subject of um, actually controlling them. And, um, but they are, it's clear to say, uh, a, an invasive, non-native species to our islands, introduced into this country actually only in the late 19th century. Uh, and it was quickly established um, across uh, Great Britain and uh, now we're so only too aware really, of all the negative impacts that this creature is having on wildlife and habitats. So expanding grey squirrel populations represents um, a huge threat, obviously, to the reds. Uh, we've got an estimated 2.7 million grey squirrels in, uh, in Great Britain, and they are out-competing the poor little red squirrels for food, they transmit this awful um, squirrel pox, which has been touched on, and that is, as has been said, fatal to our native species. And as a result, of course, the grey squirrels have displaced the red squirrels throughout much of Great Britain and, and also resulted in fragmentation of their populations. So currently we think there are fewer than uh, um, 39,000 uh, in England and 287,000 in Great Britain. So, but, but the, it's more than that, that the grey squirrels are not only impacting the populations of the red squirrels, as has been really clearly outlined by my honourable friend from Copeland. They're having a huge impact on trees, the timber industry, and also the deciduous forest, the, you know, ornamental forests as such. So, um, and that's because they strip the bark. Uh, and it's a real challenge managing woodlands and trying to deal with this. And a recent report by the Royal Forestry Society suggested that the cost of this damage is about £37 million a year uh, in England and Wales in lost timber value. And she's right, it's such an important industry for us, which we want to expand. But it's also trees are important for that carbon capture and um, climate mitigation. Uh, and, and, of course, the cost of replacing trees that squirrels have killed. Um, in fact, the, global, uh, the World Bank has forecast that the global demand for timber will quadruple by 2050, um, and, and that will include in the UK. But that's why it's even more important that we can, A, produce as much as we can at home, but B, that it's sustainable, the actual crop that we're planting. Um, and we've made commitments to this in the Environmental Improvement Plan. So um, damage from grey squirrels can act, obviously, also... As a, as a disincentive to planting trees because of the costs of actually coping with the grey squirrels. And it's, at the moment, blocking the growth of the domestic timber um, supply chain. So it really does need to be tackled. Uh, and uh, if we want to have a much more sustainable domestic timber trade, then we do need uh, to reduce pressure from this invasive non-native species. Uh, I also wanted to say that grey squirrels, um, I've mentioned, they impact on our coniferous forests, which are, are largely our timber supply, but also they have an impact in deciduous forests as well. And once they, um, the, the tree is destroyed, like, like beech, then that can allow like, fungal diseases in, and that's another, that's another threat on the trees. So it's really clear that we have to do something more about this. 
so in the light of the significant environmental damage inflicted by grey squirrels, the species has been listed as a species of special concern. It's actually under the Invasive Alien Species Order 2019, and there's similar legislation in Scotland. Uh, and that's an important tool in managing the impact of this invasive um, species. Uh, and a, a refreshed GB invasive non-native species strategy was published this year, and this set out um, uh, other uh, the, the challenges and what we need to do, and it supports other national strategies and provides an integrated approach across Great Britain, which... Um, and, and obviously we need to know what's uh, happening in Northern Ireland as well, and I'm pleased to say they're very much part of the Squirrel Accord. But just to get to the nuts and bolts of today's debate, uh, we have got our Grey Squirrel Action Plan, which is uh, DEFRA has been um, championing, and that's um, our actions, sets out our actions in England to manage these squirrels. Uh, and it will be published very, very, very shortly. I can give assurance of that. Um, uh, it's, it's a refreshed plan, and it, it, it's going to concentrate on particular um, areas over five years. It's a five-year plan uh, through giving advice, incentives for land managers, more collaboration and partnerships, funding and research um, as appropriate. And um, I did also want to thank, thank volunteers. The role of volunteers is absolutely critical, and that's been uh, highlighted by so many in this room today. But we'll also um, encourage our land managers to take up that option. Um, if they um, are in countryside stewardship under the woodland element, they can take the squirrel management supplement. So there is funding there uh, to help, and a great many um, landowners have actually taken advantage of that, and I would encourage them to do so. Um, I, I also wanted to... I mentioned the, um, the squirrel accord... Uh, which is chaired by Lord Kinnell, which I have to recognise his valuable work. Northern Ireland is very much uh, involved in that too, so we are coordinating uh, across all the nations on this and exploring different methods of management. Some particular things were mentioned by both speakers today, uh, in particular the immunocontraception, the idea of uh, encouraging squirrels to take contraceptives uh, through bait. It's an oral, taken in orally, it's put in the, put in the food, uh, and work is uh, work well underway on researching that. There's still some way to go, it has to be said, but uh, very valuable work is going on there. Um, and, uh, and we have to... To carry on doing that work, but it's it, and we will keep. We are committed to that. Also, the pine martins has been uh, the pine martins have been mentioned. Uh, that is a natural predator of the grey squirrel. Uh, so uh, they have been released uh, in the forest of Dean. They're being monitored for a program there that's quite near where I am in Somerset. So that's a very useful and interesting um, study. And there will be opportunities there as the population of pine martins grow. So that's another aspect. And the gene drive technology uh, is also uh, work still underway on this uh, in terms of altering genes, uh, which we which can actually eventually help us control the grey squirrel. And on the, the horrible squirrel pox vaccine, which has been mentioned, um, there has been work underway on developing that, but it's not looking overly promising, I've got to be honest, and work has been stalled for a number of years. Uh, and, it, um, and so we prefer to concentrate research efforts on the contraception uh, which is looking more promising in the in the long term. So I hope my uh, honourable friend is happy with that response because it was one of the questions that she she um, asked. So um, just to conclude, I also wanted to mention the landscape recovery schemes. We've got 22 of those large scale, scale landscape schemes. Second round is opening, and there are opportunities there as well as through the nature recovery projects uh, to create the right kind of habitats for these wonderful grey squirrels. So I hope that I've demonstrated there's an awful lot going on across government. A lot of it's been escalated since my honourable friend was involved in DEFRA. Thank you for all the work that the, my honourable friend from um, Innismon has been doing. It's extremely valuable and the action plan will be published very, very soon and we are committed to controlling these pernicious grey squirrels. Thank you, Chair.